everybody and welcome to today's video. Things have heated up since our last seasonal series called Cold Curls. Spring has finally sprung, summertime is upon us, and that means it's time to adjust our styling routines. So welcome to the new series called Spring Into Summer Spirals. You know, I'm not fully convinced on the name, but it's gonna have to do. With this series, you will find hair tutorials, styling tips, product recommendations, product reviews, comparisons. And we are kicking off this series with a controversial topic talking about ingredients, specifically glycerin. So stay tuned for all of the info, including my specific styling formula, as well as some really affordable drugstore product recommendations. Are you ready? Without further ado, let's get to it. If you have not yet heard of the great glycerin debate, I'll give you the quick rundown in today's video. You see, we have been really hard on glycerin in past videos. Glycerin. Huh, the dreaded glycerin. Glycerin. <laughs> And well, everyone deserves a second chance. And so do those products that contain glycerin that have been sitting and collecting dust on your shelves. So in this video, I am going to teach you how to successfully use your glycerin containing products to have the best possible wash day. Now, first off, let me give you a little bit of a background on glycerin. Who is she? What does it do? And what is the stigma against it? In short, Glycerin is a water-soluble, moisturizing alcohol. This ingredient is a humectant. A humectant is a type of ingredient that holds on to water. So it has the ability to bind water to your hair and skin, like a hydrated hug. Glycerin is not alone in the humectant family. There are a ton of ingredients that act just like it. These are some to name a few. But glycerin is the big one. And it gets a really bad reputation because it is simply very good at what it does. But in the right climate. Very, very key. Major key alert. And that's why we're here today. As we have previously discussed in the Cold Curls Winter Series, in weather conditions that are extremely cold and dry, glycerin can do unfavorable things like take the moisture from your hair and put it in the air which will only dehydrate your hair, make it more brittle, and can lead to breakage. Basically, if you're applying a lot of products that have glycerin to your curls, it's gonna go like this. The drier the air, the drier your hair. And on the other extreme, if the climate is very hot and very humid, glycerin will get greedy and it will wanna take all of the moisture in the air and bring it into your hair, but in a bad way because this will cause your hairs to swell. This is what's gonna create a lot of frizz in your hair. Your hair grows in size, but it also becomes pretty rough to the touch. Essentially, the higher the humidity, the higher the frizzies. In a nutshell. So when do we use it? Well, in weather conditions that aren't extreme. You see, you need the humidity and the dew points to be just right. Just right. The optimal conditions are between 40 degrees Fahrenheit and 60 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a very small window of opportunity. So, um, does that mean that if the humidity and the dew points and the sun and the moon and the wind and the rain are not all perfectly aligned that I'm gonna have a bad hair day? Absolutely not! That is, if you follow the formula. And now, I'll tell you how. Welcome to the styling phase. Now watch, listen, and learn. We will be using multiple products today. That doesn't mean 20, but more than one. I always find that layering products one on top of the other, not mixing, layering on top of one another, always gives better results than just using one product, especially when they are applied in the right order. And that's why I always recommend you use the prep style finish method as I've shared in many previous videos and I'll explain why in just a moment but first let's finish prepping the hair before it dries it is best to move quick 
On your wet hair, you want to apply your first moisturizing product. Of course, the products that you want to use will always depend on your hair needs. For my porous hair, I do like to apply a leave-in conditioner that is like a cream. And since we'll be using multiple products today, I'm using the Verb Leave-In Conditioner. I like this because it's super runny, it's great for my fine hair, and another reason I really love it is because it does have some protein in it, so it will help to strengthen my blonde hair as well. So, if the product you want to use has glycerin as one of the primary ingredients, use it now. Use it now while your hair is really wet at the beginning of your routine. Remember the role of the humectant, aka glycerin. It will bind moisture to your hair. And while your hair is wet, mixing the two together is going to bind them in holy matrimony and give you maximum hydration. Now you do want to make sure that the hair is coated evenly so you don't get random patches of frizz. And this is why I love brushing out my hair with my product. It's helping to evenly distribute it through my hair. It's great for curly and coily textures. However, if you do have a looser curl, wavier type texture, you need to make sure that the hair is really, really wet when you do brush it out so you can form nice, juicy, chunky clumps. And now the prep is done. The routine, however, is not. The hairs might be hydrated now, but what's gonna happen if we don't seal it all in? Madness. This is why we feel like we can't trust glycerin but we can trust her if we balance her out with the next product. That is the reason why we layer product. Again, layer, not mix. We're not cocktailing. This isn't happy hour. Happy hour does sound good right now though. Maybe when I'm diffusing. So a balanced routine will provide humectancy while also occluding. Occlusive, you may ask. An occlusive, occlusive, she exclusive. It is meant to seal in that moisture. Now to give a few examples, some of the best occlusive agents are petroleum, mineral oil, coconut oil, and dimethicone. All really great ingredients for locking in moisture. So basically, when you have all of your ingredients layered, the perfect recipe and formula is hydrate, humectant, emollient, occlusive, or hail for short. Hail, hail. Prep style finish is the method where hail is the formula. And that brings us to our next steps. We need to style and then finish. To style, I section away half of my hair to give me more control. This is when you want to apply your curl enhancing cream, your gel, your mousse. So I am applying a little bit of a curl defining cream. I am using the Dippity Doo Girls with Curls Curl Defining Cream. Just a small amount, working that through my hair. And now I'm going to define my curls with a Denon brush to style. So this just helps me to clump and define and shape my curls. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the top, but I want to compare a different product for you guys. I just used the Dippity Doo. This is a defrizz curl defining cream. And now I'm going to use the Aussie Miracle Curls. This is the frizz taming cream. And you can obviously tell by the texture of the Aussie product. This one is much heavier. It's much thicker, creamier. It is much better for thicker hair types and coarse hair. A little bit goes a long way. I'm just applying this little bit to the top section of my hair, brushing it through the exact same way. And now my curls are styled. But the thing is, both of these products do have glycerin high up in their ingredient list. However, they do have ingredients in here that are so smoothing and sealing to the hair that it helps to counteract the effects of the glycerin. We have the dimethicone, we have the coconut oil and the shea butter which are lighter than, in this one, we have mineral oil and petroleum. These are really, really strong sealing ingredients. They are gonna make your hair feel so soft and so moisturized, they're gonna seal it all in. But, 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 if you do wanna set that style in place for longevity, then you need to add hold. So you've got the shape of the curls, you wanna hold that in place with a gel or mousse. Even if you don't like crunchy hair, this step is particularly important if you are in a humid climate. See, this product specifically has pretty strong hold. 
and it's got one of the best humidity defense ingredients in it, polyquaternium 4. This ingredient will create a film over your hair in the best way. It'll maintain your curl retention even in high humidity. It is definitely an ingredient that you want to look out for in your mousse or your gel and some other really top humidity defense ingredients are these guys. Screenshot. This is the end of phase two. The styling is complete. It is time to finish. Now a pro tip if you are in high humidity environments. Stay inside if you choose to air dry. Trying to dry your wet hair in wet, humid weather conditions is a recipe for disaster. It'll take forever and it will lead to more frizz. I personally choose to diffuse, high heat, high speed, hovering around the hair until I feel that crunchy cast and then scrunching to encourage curl. Now once the hair is completely dry, you may want to finish it with the cherry on top your final occlusive sealing product. You can take a serum or oil of your choice. I'm gonna finish up with the Miracle Curls Curl Defining Oil from Aussie and use it to soften out your hair, scrunch out that crunch. See, you didn't have to worry about the crunchy hair after all. You can scrunch out and fluff the hair as you please to your desired volume. And, okay look, if you are in really, really humid conditions and you have thick and coarse hair. I'm gonna show you guys my old holy grail from a long time ago. The John Frieda Frizz Ease. Now this is probably old packaging because I've had this for a long time, but this used to be my holy grail. She is thick and she has some of the most sealing ingredients. She really is extra strength, but we'll save that for a rainy day. Just like that, now you can step outside. Still cover your hair if it's raining, but enjoy your curls. Now in a couple days, if you need to refresh and add a little bit of moisturization, always check your products. Some of your products, especially some of the really heavy ones, can be applied to damp or dry hair. So you don't have to completely re-wet your hair in order to refresh it. In fact, you want to avoid re-wetting it completely until you finally wash it, which I do encourage you to do. Especially with ingredients like these, they are amazing for fighting against humidity. They will keep your curls in check all spring and summer and humid and beach and everything long. But make sure that you are shampooing your hair and you do have a regular clarifying shampoo routine to make sure your hair is nice and cleansed and fresh and always balanced. We went over a lot of information today and if you learned something new and you liked it, give this video a thumbs up. I want to thank you so much for joining me today. I do have a lot more coming as this is only the beginning of this series and we post new videos on this channel every Texture Tuesday. So I hope you subscribe and stay tuned to see the next one and please let me know what you want to see next in the comments below. Until next Texture Tuesday, this has been your main girl Mel, out. Peace. T, G, I, T, Tidget Titties. Demonetized. I think that was right. This washroom's too small for me to breathe. Hey, I want to be famous. Hiya, how are ya? This is a damn good hair day though. Balling on a budget, hello. You get the best of both worlds. I'm very tired, and that's why I am the way that I am. No other reason. I was not dropped as a child. I think this went well. She's a purple freak, purple freak. She's a purple freak, purple freak. She's a purple freak, purple freak. And she's so she gets. I want to thank every single one of you that has made it this far. It's been a journey. She's a purple freak, purple freak. I actually, I need to parody that song. I'll see you in the music video. Peace.